Hey, good morning. It is Saturday morning. It's 6 a.m. and I can't pull into the driveway of um, the job I'm on until about 6.15. I, like usually, if it was a single family home, um, I, I would be in there at like 5.15, 5, 5 a.m., especially during rewires. Um, but I gotta wait a little bit. So I, I wanted to, to talk to um, helpers, okay? and how to hyperdrive your your growth in this trade and i re i really mean that i mean like if you want to be like the the best way i can describe it is um when i was a helper i wanted to i wanted to be a mechanic like i wanted it so bad and the way it was described to me was you need to go get it you need to you need to earn it you need to 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 push it you need to you need to to strive for it every day and the way i was taught to do that was show motivation show that you're hungry like you know get first thing you, you got to listen to your mechanic and if your mechanic has you your mechanic should be having should be teaching you you shouldn't be there just to lighten the burden of your mechanic your mechanic should be teaching you the trade and what i mean by this is when you're in the beginning okay when you're when you're getting tools out of the van cleaning the van out you're cleaning the van out to learn the tools that are within the van, okay? The tools' names, when you're using tools. Like, so when you set up a job in the morning, and that's what, this is what I'm, I'm stressing here, okay? Learn how to set a job up, okay? And do it every single day, all right? Set the job up. If it's a drop cloth job, you know, get in there and clean the drop cloths out either at the end of the day or in the morning but don't ask to do it just get on it and don't clean them and make a mess like you have to exert effort and a conscientious effort you have to if you're cleaning drops think of the what is the cleanest way the best way to clean the drops and have them organized and do it in a manner that it doesn't make a mess go outside and, and if, don't do it on someone's lawn because the dust will get on the lawn and it'll be shown. But if you can like go into the driveway behind the van and do it there, do it there, okay? Then you can bring them back in and then you can set up the job. And set up the job like um, put like the, the toolboxes in the back and the tools you're using right in front of the toolboxes. Organize the toolboxes. All these things are are teaching you a rhythm they're teaching you rituals okay and that's what you want every morning you want you want a routine where you get in and the the quicker you learn your routines electrical when you're doing electrical electrical is only one piece of it everything around electric is a lot of times what guys need to learn how to set like setting drop cloths up as you walk into a house like a runway setting up drop cloths for your tools like all like all these all these items as a helper yeah electrical theory electrical theory is going to take some time to learn but everything else besides the theory you can really master and that's that's what i that's what i ended up doing is i my mechanics allowed me to to learn how to set jobs up learn when to break a job down learn how to move from one room to another room and keep it clean so as you're learning the rhythms okay and that's really what's most important is learning these rhythms okay the theory you can go to night school and learn theory it's not theory's not hard it's everything else around the theory that is what will make a mechanic all right and hours on the job are most important for younger apprentices especially if you're not making money yet and i, I want you to hear me out here there's a book 
called outliers. And I, I know it might say the outliers or something. But the book basically states um, how um, Bill Gates became what he was and how some other, like Wayne Gretzky, how did he become like the best hockey player? And the, the common denominator in, in all of um, these different, these masters was 10,000 hours. They devoted 10,000 hours to one specific thing and they became really good at it, all right? And same thing here. This is why I'm a master electrician today. So if you look at your work day, okay, and this is why I, I'm stressing this to, to helpers. If you're working with a mechanic that likes to go home at three o'clock, you are depriving yourself of so many hours on the job. It's it's going to take you so long to, to make any money in this trade. Um, if you can get on the job, like if your mechanic shows up at 8, if you can ask him to train you enough to that you can show up at 7.30, by all means, get those extra hours in, okay? And it's not just, like if you break down your work day, okay, and do an honest breakdown of it. So if you get on the job at 7.30, but you technically don't start working until 8.15, then hours towards your trade is documented by hours that you're actually working. All right, so if you're on there at 8.15 and you take lunch at 12, well, there's three and like three quarter hours, okay? That's what you got towards your trade. And then if your lunch break is a little long, like an hour, and then you stop at three, well then, so right now you have six, five and three quarter hours that designated to your trade out of a work day, that's not good. Like you're gonna, it's gonna take you so long to put forth the hours to become a mechanic. And I'm not talking about a mechanic on paper. I'm talking about in your hands, fundamentally inside, you having the knowledge of a master mechanic. Okay, you can't fake that. Like, I don't care how you snowball your hours and I don't care how you fake this and skate and eight and like run around and pretend you're working when you're not. You're only shortchanging yourself, okay? And I, I witnessed this when I was a helper and I, I figured out that the more hours I, I took to this trade, the, the, the better I was gonna be. I watched all these other guys that, you know, were waiting for the weekend and waiting for the end of the day to go to the bar and you know, running around playing in the basement or, or doing all these things to avoid work or, or just not being involved mentally into the trade. And I went a different avenue. Like I put forth like effort. I mean, every day, like, I mean, I was, I mean, I was zeroed in tunnel vision learning this trade and it flew by. And the reason why I was able to apprentice under a master electrician such as the one I, I mentored under was because he saw that. He wasn't going to allow some clown to, well, one, the guy was a legitimate master electrician that was making a lot of money, okay? And, you know, some people know him as Fuzzy, okay? If you know who Fuzzy is, that was my master electrician. That's who taught me how to run jobs. That's who taught me how to deal with customers. That's who taught me how to be the best I could be. Like he, he was driven when he was, when he was teaching me, he wasn't just teaching me the trade, but he was teaching me the drive. He was teaching me, if you want to be good at this trade, this is what the trade requires from you. And he taught me, you know, never use a cordless drill on a device, you know, use like all these, these shortcuts. Some of these guys are taking, if you, if you're learning this trade, put your cordless drill down. Okay, that should be used for drywall screws, all right, and drilling holes, and that's it, okay, because it doesn't help you using it to install devices, okay, it will, it's not going to help you become a better tradesman, okay, all it's going to do is get something done quicker for you, but it doesn't teach you anything about this trade, like putting a screwdriver in your hand and actually turning every screw is the most valuable thing you can do and some people say how is that valuable one it builds forearm strength okay and as a electrician your forearms will become extremely strong two it builds stamina 
So as you're turning that screw and your forearms are burning, and they do, they burn, it hurts so bad. You just keep going and it actually, you'll work through that burn. And as you work through that burn, you're building up a mentality of being able to work through difficult times. So when you run into a job, like some of like, we, I specialize in knob and two rewires. Some of these knob and two rewires are nightmares. And I mean nightmares. And when, when I was younger and, and Fuzzy and I were talking and Fuzzy was like, so what, what area of electric are you going to go into? I told him I want to specialize in knob and tube. And this is going back in 04, 03, when no one was specializing in knob and tube. Actually, no one liked knob and tube. It wasn't, there was no mandatory rewires yet. Like, they're, they're, like when I said that, it caught him off guard. And he's like, why do you want to specialize in knob and tube? Everyone hates it. And that's why I specialized in it. Because everyone else hated it. And at that point, any old electrician that knew knob and tube... I would, I would work with him and I would ask him all the questions, all the history behind it, all the reasons why they did this, all the reasons why they did that. And I started gaining my knowledge to becoming, you know, specialized in it. And that motivation to do it, like if I didn't have motivation, I would have just worked my eight, got off and would have went, went, played with my quad or go camping or, but I was motivated to, to excel in this trade. And that's that's what I talk about getting those hours in. If you want to be a mechanic, you got to be motivated in this trade. You have to want to work. Want it. Like, I want it to the point where, like, every minute that I had when I was in my 20s, you know, I tried to work. I, like, weekends. And I didn't do side work. I, I, don't, I don't think side work's a good idea. And this is why. When I was working underneath Fuzzy, all right, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., I gave Fuzzy my all, okay? And if, if I could extend a job underneath of him, I would, and then I would go home and I'd sleep. But I gave him my all. And as I gave him my all, he would give me more money, okay? And that was, that was a good return. And if I went on and I did side work, I wouldn't be giving him my all because I would be going somewhere else. And... It just, I got compensated by dedicating myself to my mechanic, okay? And, and in return, my mechanic gave me more money. My son, so what happened with me and Fuzzy was, as I gained more knowledge and I became better and better and better, I then became a subcontractor. So three days out of the week, I'd work for Fuzzy, and then two days out of the week, I'd work for myself, okay? And that's, instead of doing side work, like on the weekends or like at night, I allowed it to take up my normal working hours. All right. And by doing so, if I had a difficult job Monday and Tuesday, on Wednesday, when I went to work with Fuzzy, I could ask him, I could ask him, what's this? What's this? And he could teach me how to become a business owner, how to have integrity. The number one thing was, you know, you have to stand by your word. If you say you're going to work, it doesn't matter if you're sick. It doesn't matter if you're hurting. It doesn't matter if you're hungover. If you tell someone and you give someone your word, you have to live up to your word. And that was huge. Okay. that In this trade, so many people go back on their word. The fact that I kept my word, it, there was a mutual respect between us. And he saw what I wanted. Okay, and he gave it to me. He, he gave me my knowledge. He, he taught me how to run jobs. And it all comes down to those, those hours, okay? Don't try to work, just, if, you're, if you're early in this trade, don't try to just work eight hours. Try to be on the job before your mechanic. Ask him if you're allowed to set up. And this'll, this is what's really gonna help you. Ask if you can break down the job to the point where the responsibility is 100% on you. And you don't have to be told a single thing that you missed. And that was always the goal when I was breaking jobs down was Fuzzy should never have to come up to me and tell me I missed something. All right. He should never have to remind me to do something because if he's reminding me to do it, that means I can't do it on my own. All right. 
And as as you're learning this trade, you want to be able to take on the 100% burden of responsibility for anything you do to the point where someone can't correct you. Okay, and that should be your goal. And you should be driven to accomplish that goal. And as long as you're driven to accomplish that goal, you will excel in this trade. Excel. This trade is in desperate need of leaders. We have hundreds of people in the trade, but no, we don't have a lot of leaders. We don't have a lot of people that will take on the responsibility and the burden and give their word. When they say something will get done, it'll get done correctly, cleanly, and 100%. Um, that's something that we have, we're not teaching guys. I, you know, I, I see grown adults using excuses like, oh, I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that or, you know, because of this or because of that. Like, they're always giving excuses. I was never allowed to give an excuse underneath my, my apprenticeship. Never. Okay. An excuse meant I failed. An excuse meant I can't be on my own. And I was so driven to be on my own that I, I, I wouldn't give an excuse. I, I would, if I missed something, I made sure I wouldn't miss it twice. All right. And if, if I had bad habits, okay, Fuzzy made sure I got those bad habits out of me. All right. And that's why uh, these younger generation, if you want to become a mechanic, log in real hours. Don't, don't fall back on your heels. Okay. Be aggressive in wanting this trade be aggressive in your rituals in your morning be aggressive in your sleeping habits be aggressive in how like drink your coffee that's great but you got to make sure your diet can handle the amount of energy this trade needs all right and i promise you if you do this if you do it just for one year try it for one year and i guarantee you, you will be a different person at the end of it all right, so I'm going to uh, spend 15 minutes. I'm going to get back on the job. God bless. Take care. Good luck. Talk to you soon.